Alrighty, so it is the end of my safari adventure. Nine days wandering through Tanzania, four national parks, just myself, the guide, and our chef, which has been absolutely spectacular. I want to run through and compare and contrast some of the kind of lessons learned, some of the observations uh, that have come out of this. Now previously I've done two other safaris. One was a budget backpacker, two day, or yeah, three day, um, two night uh, safari in Botswana. Uh, and then the other was a six day more luxury safari uh, in, uh, in, in South Luangwa, Zambia. And so all three of these experiences has been very, very different. But the takeaways have been that no matter what, uh, the guide makes all the difference in the world. I mean, timing, seasonality, those are key factors, but uh, time in the vehicle and access is so, so important. How busy the park's gonna be, how many other vehicles are gonna be there, are you able to go out? Are you able to get to the areas where the animals are going to be? All these different things. So some of the things that I've learned is uh, are that uh, different safari companies, especially the larger safari companies, uh, are confined by fuel budgets. Of course, they don't want you driving or they don't want their drivers driving all over the place because that's going to cost uh, a lot more gas, which then drives up the cost. So that means that if they if they hear on the radio that there's a great event, some you know like lions about to take something down, or or a cheetah out on the other side of the park, or the camp that's a 10, 15 minute drive away, they're probably not going to end up going to it, even though uh, even though they would like to, uh, just because for financial reasons that you know they're they'll go over their gas quota. Uh, as an extension of that, <clears throat> it's really important to specify and talk about what type of safari you want, but then also what your schedules are going to be. So out of these nine days, we had, uh, what was it, two normal wake-ups, which was waking up um, about 7, getting going about 7.30. All of the other days, uh, we were starting at 6 or earlier, uh, which meant that we got basically an extra hour, hour and a half of game time. Um, you know, multiply that by whatever it was, five, five, six, yeah, five, six hours. So, so well, more than that, right? So, of, of extra safari time, uh, which ended up being fantastic. That's when the sun was coming up. These incredible vistas, especially in the Serengeti and some of these other areas where the light was just breathtaking as, as the sun kind of caught the trees and as you can see just the clouds behind me throughout this entire experience have been spectacular uh it's it's so getting out there getting early doing that extra hour hour and a half making sure that your your safari company is factoring that in and that they're willing to do that are they willing to do a full day game drive uh, we did a couple of those of course that opens up all sorts of areas of the park that are uh, far less accessible, far less trafficked. Uh, and then if you find something that's really interesting, then you can spend a lot more time there. You're not confined where you, you, you know, you all have to run on. Um, this safari, having those nine days, I was really worried, especially because it's basically just myself, the guide, uh, out, out there the entire day, uh, that it was going to be a bit boring and, uh, or tiring or would I burn out? And, uh, we covered four different parks, which meant that the landscape was constantly changing. Now, nine days in one park probably would have been too many. Um, but, uh, but as it was, and as it broke down, it was perfect. We spent four days in the Serengeti, which was absolutely spectacular. There's Nagorgoro crater behind me. Uh, we only had one morning here. It's not huge, but I'd say I, I would have happily done a full day here. So having that time, one of the other things that I think I felt like really made a difference is, uh, and compared to what I saw with some of the other vehicles, is I was up 90% of the time when we were moving and I was scanning and looking, uh, which meant that, uh, you know, one, my guide was exceptional. His ability to find a lion reclining at the base of a tree somewhere or, you know, in the grass that I, I would have completely missed. And even, even with him pointing it out and explaining it was, was, you know, challenged in finding, um, you know, his eye was spectacular. Uh, but there were, you know, some really great animals uh, that by being up there, having a different vantage point or just having an extra set of eyes, because he was also driving, um, you know, they opened up uh, these, these, these great finds and, uh, and incredible moments. And I think that's also part of why on top of just having fantastic luck, uh, but those factors, right? Getting up early, um, making sure that we uh, that we spent the time out there, you know, driving, going in the different areas, and then the driver's skill set. 
um, and then just you know being eyes on made a huge difference in what we saw and why this was just such a spectacular safari. Um, the Serengeti, of course, was was fantastic. Um, all of the all of the areas, I mean, all four of these parks uh, were were wonderful, and each had its own distinct feel, its own animals, wildlife kind of composition, behavior, landscapes, zones. Uh, oh, so that was all all, all absolutely amazing. Um, we did run into uh, at one point one or two cars, three cars actually, from a one of the large budget tourist. Um, groups, uh, which I had looked at when kind of planning this um, before kind of gulping and deciding to take this, uh, uh, you know, to shell out the cash for, for doing it the way I did. Um, and um, I was very, very, very happy that I went this way and, uh, and, and splurged and spoiled myself. Um, they were packed into those safari vehicles like sardine cans, so only slightly larger than the car that I was in. Uh, and I mean they were spilling out onto the roof and you could see some people were sitting uh, I can imagine from a photography standpoint people were constantly moving um, jostling everything and then everywhere they went they went together as a block so all three vehicles uh, were, were going um, and lined up so you were already in a traffic jam um, coming this time of year off season I was worried that I was gonna miss the Great Migration um, or at least uh, kind of fall in the middle of it the, the, the boring part um, because they've already forded the river and uh, now they're they're just basically heading down to the fields before they spread out on the fields and then start calving. Um, we saw some some impressive lines of, of uh, wildebeest making their way south um, but uh, it meant that all of the other wildlife all the big cats everything else that's, that are already there but they were very active they were um, they were very you know fresh and and, and uh, and uh, the seasonality part of it worked out great. Uh, very few bugs, uh, very few mosquitoes. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, coming early December, which I was concerned about, ended up actually being uh, being great. I mean, I couldn't have asked for a, a better collection of animals uh, and sightings and, and, and that whole side of it. Um, I shot this whole thing on a Canon 60 uh, with a Sigma 70 to 300, uh, non-prime. Uh, I would have loved to have a 400 in a couple situations, um, 400 or even a 500. Uh, but to be honest, it, it really, I, I, I was, I missed very, very few shots as a result of the lens. Um, so, uh, you know, and that's whatever it is, it's a $200 lens. Um, make sure to, to check out Flickr. Um, once the shots go up, you can see there or Instagram. Uh, and, uh, and of course, you know, see for yourself. But uh, it, it, uh, I, I was, I was immensely relieved that that didn't end up being a huge issue. So yes, uh, do safari. Oh, and, and the camping safari component, it was quite comfortable. Um, I had a pillow, uh, a mattress, a sleeping bag, my own tent. And, um, yeah, uh, it was, uh, the, never had to use a, a squatty toilet. Um, so it, the whole thing was, was quite comfortable, civilized in that capacity, uh, by European standards. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I took my probiotic and everything else. I did do, I did do the safari right away when I first arrived, starting the trip, figuring that that way, if I did catch anything from street food and stuff like that, uh, in the lead up, then I wouldn't have a uncomfortable stomach during the safari. Uh, and during those long trail drives and of course then I avoided uh, drinking alcohol and things like that during uh, to keep my my stomach as ship shape as possible because you are in the middle of nowhere and last safari I <clears throat> had a very rumbly gut at one point and was handed a machete out in the middle of the safari bush and uh, told that I needed to go try and uh, dig in the hard <laughs> <laughs> rock hard dirt uh, a, 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 a small hole and, uh, and fill it so uh, that was a deeply unpleasant experience and uh, I was very happy to uh, not have that issue but also the restrooms and everything else were great here um, so uh, as so yeah super safe you can actually fly into these parks as well uh, the Serengeti in particular um, I actually routed in Dar es Salaam uh, and then uh, and then down uh, to uh, Arusha uh, or Kilimanjaro Airport and then from Arusha is where we launched the safari uh, which was was quite easy um, so uh, the other thing I guess is that the Serengeti I mean Tanzania is 
people often think of Kenya, and I saw a lot of companies uh, from Kenya. But uh, I mean, from what I've seen, this is this is the place. This is where a big chunk of the park is, and uh, this is where you want to end up. What you want to see. So, from a safari standpoint, yeah, get out there. I mean, uh, less is more. Uh, it cost me double to do this solo uh, compared to uh, if I had split it or joined a joined another group. Um, but I'd say that I probably got um, you know triple or quadruple my value uh, from from paying that extra bet. And for camping safari, uh, you know, depending on on what length, uh, budget, all those different things. Um, you're looking at probably between 400, 500, 600 dollars, depending on the region, um, depending on the safari company, uh, duration, which parks, because there's so many park fees. Um, and uh, I guess one of the other things that I did look at was doing a self-drive, and uh, I know those are very popular in South Africa. I'm very happy that I didn't do that here, especially, uh, I don't think you can in some of these parks, but even in the Serengeti, uh, if you could have, I just wouldn't have found the animals. I mean, knowing, learning now that, okay, leopards are in this place at certain times of the day. Uh, they prefer trees along the water line with certain, you know, X, Y, Z. Um, the trees, the lions in the trees, you know, the lions go up in the trees because they're hot, so that's going to be midday. Okay, so that means that if you want to find tree lions, then you need to go down to these certain areas, certain types of trees that they can climb because they can't pull their claws out. Um, at a certain point in point in the day, um, you, you know, do you want uh, elephants? Well, do you, what time do you want elephants? Do you want them when they're up uh, sleeping, or do you want them when they're down drinking and grazing? Uh, giraffe, you know, is, all of the different animals. Cheetah, for example, uh, we found cheetah looking out on the plains, looking right, you know, in in these very specific locations on these mounds, and otherwise you just wouldn't wouldn't be able to spot them uh, if they were laying down, or if they were doing things. So you have to know where all that stuff is. Um, so, um, yeah, having the guide, a knowledgeable guide makes a huge difference. And uh, you really notice uh, how knowledgeable you know, your guide is quite quickly. Uh, quite often we found that, uh, uh, you know, I could see that there were some other vehicles that were kind of keeping tabs because we were quite often the first vehicle on, uh, on an animal. And uh, I think one of the other things that I really, really enjoyed about doing it this way and having that flexibility was well, quite often one of the only vehicles, the only vehicle, one of three vehicles on an animal. Um, and uh, in other cases you can have 20, you know, 20, 30 different vehicles. Uh, part of that is that it's low season. I mean, these campgrounds have all been quite empty, um, which also made a huge difference. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's, uh, uh, I don't know, it's been unreal. And uh, I, my previous safari experiences were great, uh, but I mean, this is really kind of, this has just been the icing on the cake. And uh, check out Zambia, check out Botswana, check out Tanzania, do a safari. Uh, it's pricey, but when you compare it to, you know, a nice hotel stay or something like that, it's 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 not as crazy perhaps as you might think. And if you're doing it with somebody, um, you know, that drops the price quite considerably. And uh, it's it's not you're not roughing it you're not you're not experiencing a lot of hardship really um, and you know if that's a big deal for you then then there are options out there for that as well so without further ado I will bid a tragic goodbye to Nagorogoro which is behind me here and uh, it's time to head back to Arusha and Zanzibar virtual wayfair out.